What's up YouTube? Today I have a quick video to teach you how to upgrade your AAP-01 inner barrel and bucking. Also, if you like the AAP-01, don't forget, I am giving away this toy airsoft pistol on my channel, and I will be announcing the winner on Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2023. Just go watch the last video to enter to win. So let's get started. To remove the upper on the AAP-01, just push the button on the back of the pistol to separate the two halves. We only need the upper portion of the pistol to do these upgrades, so you can put the lower aside. Now, remove these two screws on the underside of the upper receiver with a 2mm hex key. This will allow you to remove the barrel and hop-up assembly from the receiver. To remove the assembly, just slide it out part way and twist it to one side and gently remove it. Don't use too much force as this gun is mostly plastic. Now remove these two screws on either side of the barrel with a 1.5mm hex key. Now you can gently wiggle the hop up and inner barrel out of the outer barrel. Now we are going to remove the four screws holding the hop up together. One of the screws is covered up by the hop wheel, but there is a small cutout in the wheel to allow access to the screw, so just adjust the wheel until the screw aligns with the gap. Now remove the four screws using a Phillips head screwdriver. Now gently pry the hop up open to gain access to the bucking. Be careful when separating the two halves of the hop up as there are two little hex bolts that are inside the hop up that allow the screws to thread into the hop up. So here we will be installing a 150 millimeter crazy jet inner barrel as well as a 60 degree autobot bucking. So the Maple Leaf Autobot buckings come with this little metal collar that slides around the end of the bucking to help keep its shape. To get the collar on, just pinch the bucking tightly and gently slide the metal collar on. And be sure to match the gap in the collar with the nub sticking out of the end of the bucking. If you're having trouble with this step, you can also lube the bucking with lightweight 100% silicone oil to get the collar to slide on easier. It should look like this when you're done. Now make sure you put a thin coat of silicone lubricant on the outside of the bucking so that it doesn't degrade. I like to do this on a paper towel so I don't make a mess and it absorbs any excess. Just be sure not to get any of the silicone oil on the inside of the bucking because it will completely destroy your accuracy and precision. Now just go ahead and slide the bucking onto the end of your barrel. You want to match up this little spine on the inside of the bucking with the groove on the outside of the barrel. Now once you have your bucking on, we are ready for reassembly. Now when reassembling, it's incredibly important to get this little hop-up arm reinstalled correctly, otherwise your hop-up won't work. So this little bent piece right here needs to slide in to the groove in your hop-up wheel. This longer piece right here needs to slide into the little channel inside your hop-up wheel. And this little bit right here is going to sit on top of your bucking and that's what pushes down on the bucking to make the hop. Now before we insert the hop arm, identify the little window that exposes the groove in the hop wheel. To make installing easier, adjust the hop wheel until the groove is higher in the window. This groove is what the bent tab on the hop arm will sit in. And it causes the hop arm to move up and down, which gives your BBs more or less hop. Now that everything has been adjusted, we can insert the hop arm. Hold the hop arm in this orientation and slide the long skinny part into the channel of the hop. -up. Then make sure the bent tab is fully inserted into the groove on the hop wheel. Now we can check to see if we did it right by adjusting the hop up and down and the arm should move up and down with the wheel. Now let's get the hop up back together. 
I like to lay the bucking on the hop arm like so and then I close the other half of the hop up on top since this side has no moving parts in it. Just be sure to line up the rectangular cutout with the nub on the other side of the bucking. Then lightly squeeze the assembly together and gently tug the barrel and bucking back and forth until you feel everything clamp into place and the hop up seams are flushed together. Now just put your four screws back in and make sure to tighten each corner evenly. Be careful not to over tighten any of the screws as the hop up is made out of really cheap material and you could easily strip the threads. Now slide your hop up and inner barrel back into your outer barrel and put the two screws back into the sides. Remember to be very careful not to cross thread anything or over tighten anything while we're reassembling because again the materials are really cheap. Now insert the hop up end into the upper receiver, rotate it 90 degrees, insert it, and then rotate it back. Make sure your screw holes are all lined up and then reinsert the two two millimeter screws. Be careful not to strip them. Now we are just about done. We just need to put the upper back onto the lower receiver to do this. Just line up the hinge with the little bar on the lower receiver and uh, start to close it back up. Push the button in the back to get it all the way closed and you're good to go. Now since I went with a slightly longer barrel for better accuracy, uh, I'm going to put on an extended outer barrel, which is super easy to install. You just screw it on like you would a tracer unit, but this will cover up the inner barrel from sticking out of the tip of your gun. Now you could just put a mock suppressor on the tip of this to cover up the barrel, uh, but if you're trying to put on a tracer unit, there's a good chance that the inner barrel might extend past the part of your tracer unit that activates the lights. So you might be shooting through the tracer unit and it might not actually be activating. Now when going for even longer inner barrel setups, it might be a good idea to put a little rubber o-ring in between the inner barrel and the outer barrel so that you can stabilize the inner barrel better and achieve better accuracy and higher precision. For this short of a barrel, it's really not necessary. But you can get this box of o-rings on Amazon for like 10-15 bucks and it's really nice to have around whenever you're working on airsoft guns. And now you're ready to hit the field with your new inner barrel and bucking. If you found this video useful, please hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content. Thanks for watching.